Okay, today we're going to make humble quarter fan spin. Quarter fan spin is the worst problem on a MacBook motherboard for a couple of reasons. The first reason it's a big nightmare is because quarter fan spin can be caused by anything. And I do mean anything. Secondly, since the fan only spins for a quarter of a spin, since it only goes from deep to deep, that gives you this much time to measure voltage, this much time to measure clock signals. So it becomes a complete nightmare and a real test to how much you know about how, the system and how it works and what makes it tick. Because, again, quarter fan spin can literally be anything. And it's a royal pain in the ass. So to give you an idea of what quarter fan spin is right over here, let's plug this in and show you what happens when I plug it in. So when I plug it in, Awful. Absolutely awful. And the worst part about this is that this board was cleaned by another repair shop. Now, the reason wholesale business sucks, the reason dealing with other repair shops sucks, is because they're going to clean everything before you get to see it. So you're not going to see where the original damage is. Since you don't see where the original damage is, it's hard to know where to start. And knowing that quarter fan spin can be anything makes this a real fucking nightmare. So let's go into the microscope and try to reverse engineer and figure out what exactly happened here before it was fucked with by whoever decided to send it to me. So, let's zoom out. So everything here is a, firstly, everything here is kind of a mildly corroded mess. That's the first problem, is that it's not really an issue where there's like one spot that's obviously more corroded than the other. Corrosion around, uh, that's corroded, that's corroded, that's corroded. This is just a steaming pile of horse shit. We want to find something that looks more corroded than anything else. So this is not really corrosion. This is just too much time in an ultrasonic. So this is what happens when people use Windex or dish soap in their ultrasonic, and they just leave it in there forever and ever and ever. And let's see. So we have, yeah. This, 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 this pretty, it looks nasty everywhere. But what I'm looking for, I'm looking for signs of where it started. Because, again, shit like this, that, that's not really so much corrosion as it is just a sign that it was left in the cleaner for a really long time by people who don't know how to use an ultrasonic cleaner. So what I'm looking for here is I'm really looking for not just orange probe points. I'm looking for some red ones. I'm looking for something that tells me that it wasn't just soaked in a cleaner. I'm looking for not just signs of erosion, meaning, for example, over here where you can see that the solder is just kind of eroding away. I'm not looking for that. That's just signs it sat in a cleaner for too long. What I'm looking for are really hardened red probe points because those red probe points are going to tell me that it's not just that liquid was applied here, but that liquid was applied here while the, there was electricity going through it. Like, bam, here we go. Zinc. See that? See that? See that? See that right over here? This is where the water was applied during the electricity. So, for example, uh, let's just find something else to give you an idea. So, see how this capacitor looks kind of nasty? It's not shiny like it should be. It's not... You know, that solder joint is just kind of bleh, or let's find a better example, like this one. That's the technically good solder joint, but it looks kind of worn away. And if you're not experienced, you may think that that's liquid damage. This is not liquid damage right here. This is ultrasonic damage. This is just, it's been in the ultrasonic too long, but that's not going to necessarily destroy this resistor. That's not going to destroy the part. What we're looking for is we're trying to differentiate the water damage from the idiot repair shop damage. So that over there, that's idiot repair shop that doesn't know how to ultrasonic on motherboard. But this over here, this is the real damage. So over here, see that? That's the actual electricity added with water damage. So let's take a look and see what this is for. So this is right by a coil that is used for Thunderbolt Boost. Now here's the thing. Thunderbolt Boost... That's not really something that's going to cause quarter fan spin. But right over here, we have a clock chip. So this is the corroded part. This is not the corroded part. But I know that this is right next to the part that had water on it at the time that there was electricity going through the machine. This over here is an RTC clock chip. This is used for the system clock. So the system clock is going to be used for things like, hi, PCH, talk to other components of the machine. Hi, PCH, turn on and get everything going. So if the clock signal is being brought down, then this could cause quarter fan spin. So let's take a look here and see what happens if we get rid of that. So I'm going to turn on this JBC. So keep in mind, this thing has been off. This is the hot air station that Jessa got me for my birthday. Thank you very much. This thing is, is, is fucking amazing. So watch this. So keep in mind, it's cold. I mean, I could, it's, it's cold in my office, so I could have actually touched this thing with my, um, with my hand, and the nozzle was cold. And watch how fast it's just going to get rid of this little clock. Oh, my God. I mean, this is... I'm not kidding. This is better than sex. So... I'll, this is this is this is fucking amazing, and you know what the weird part is in that in that other video that I did, I actually compared it to the Weller, and I found them to be very very similar. 
But for some reason, in, over the course of actual use, I find myself gravitating towards the JVC. Even though that it is, they, they, they work very similarly. Like when I actually time it, when I seek to, to figure out how much time does it take for things to work on both of these stations, I'm noticing that they're both very similar. But when I use it, for some reason, I just... The JVC is cooler. I mean, it's like using, you know, a high-end BMW versus a Bentley. I mean, you know, if you're driving from Brooklyn to Manhattan at your 20 miles an hour in traffic, there's not really that much of a difference between your BMW or your Bentley. Like, you know, funk, they get you to the same place. They're both high-performance cars. They both do their job. But, man, Bentley is cooler. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know what it is. But, but, and that car is going to be $250,000 versus the... 80 or 90,000 for your BMW. But it's just, it's just one of those things. I mean, I, they measure very similarly. I shouldn't really be so much attracted to one over the other, the same way I shouldn't be using this iron versus the micro pencil to be working on that. that but what the hell? But, but for some reason, I like it so much more. And this is something that I could have never bought myself. There, it's not because I can't afford it, it's because if I did actually buy that myself, I would never forgive myself because I would have spent about $1,200 more on a station that does the exact same thing that the other one does. And even though that this thing is so much just, it's called the JBC JT-A. Even though this thing is just so much cooler feeling and just makes me happier inside, I would never be able to actually enjoy that had I paid for it myself. Just knowing that I could get the exact same shit done in the exact same time frame and the exact same quality with my Weller, I wouldn't, but, but, for, but it just feels so much nicer. And again, I can't put it into words because, you know, I, I really can't. Like, they heat up in the same amount of time. They're, they're both strong. They both have hand pieces that feel similar. But for some reason, using this is just a pleasure. And that's something I didn't anticipate when I did that JBC review and also when I did the JBC versus Weller review. I like using this thing more. And trust me, JBC is not paying me to say that. They're, they're really not. I mean... Like, after, you know, you demo $3,200 worth of gear and you send it back saying, I'm not really interested in this stuff because it works very similarly uh, to my other stuff, which costs a lot less money. That, 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 those are the magic words you tell a company if you never want them to speak to you again. So, I mean, you know, trust me, JBC ain't paying me shit. But, and it's one of those things that you kind of get out of a long-term demo versus a short-term one. So, in the short term, the differences between the JBC and the Weller seemed really minor. But in the long term, the difference between the JBC hot air and the Weller hot air is just, I don't know. It could be in my head. It could, here's, that's the thing. Maybe it's in my head. Maybe it's because I know the JBC is more expensive that I like it. Or maybe it's something that I'm failing to properly define. But whatever it is, I, I don't find that to be true with the soldering iron. I really truly believe, and granted, it could be because I don't have the soldering iron here for a long-term demo. I really found the, like, I, I'm really happy with my Weller. I mean, my, with my Hakko FX951 and the soldering iron with it, I don't find there to be any functional difference between that and the JBC one. I don't. They just, they work the same to me. But the hot air station, the hot air, that's just something else entirely. This, this just makes my life easier in a way that I would have never dreamed possible. I never thought I could be in love with a hot air station. You know, like, things like love and marriage and, you know, those are things that you usually reserve for a significant other. But, I mean, I love this JBC. If it had a hole, I would have sex with it. In fact, it does. It actually has this thing. It, it, it's funny that I said that because it has a, a hole in the front of it. And it says suction with a green button. And, oh, man, you know, a guy can dream. Anyway. So, get a fan. No more quarter fan spin.
let's go over in the schematic what I did and why I did what I did. And let's also open up the board view software because the board view software is going to be very telling as to why I did what I did. Okay, let's open the proper software for this model. 820-2936. That was... So according to the open broadcaster clock, that was quarter fan spin solved in 9 minutes and 56 seconds. That is cool. So, over here, on this screen... Ahem, I said on this screen... Oh, you're capturing the wrong screen, aren't you? You are. There we go. Okay, on this screen. So let's open up. This is board view over here. Now, I, when I looked around the board, the, extra, the real nasty corrosion was over here. And you can't see that because the graphics in this program is screwed up. Anytime you resize this window, you actually have to reopen the file. That's because it's from 1995 and hasn't been updated. So these are the two resistors that look nasty. And these are with Thunderbolt. See what it says T29? T29 on the bottom here, that's the Thunderbolt boost circuit. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about. But I know that because that had the red probe points, that this is where the liquid got while the electricity was going through it. So this gives me a hint. Now, Thunderbolt is not going to cause quarter fan spin, but system clock? So you have to think about this for a second. Think about it logically. So that's a, this is corrosion right by a 25 megahertz system clock and also by sysclock RTC, which is a 32 kilohertz system clock. So if your fan, think about it, your fan is spinning like this for like the really smallest piece of a quarter of a second, and you have a clock that's going to turn on in, you know, 25 megahertz, that's 25 million cycles a second, or 32 kilohertz, 32,000 cycles a second, maybe my fan is spinning for one thirty-two thousandth of a second. So my thinking is corrosion is right on top of a clock. If the clock is not turning on, which means the computer is literally going to turn on for one thirty-two thousandths of a second or one twenty-five millionths of a second, which is quarter fan spin. It's actually not quarter fan spin. It's one twenty-five millionth of a fan spin. And when you replace this chip, which is bad, which is most likely pulling the clock signal down, it, it fixes my problem. And again, you have to think... This is not the type of problem where I look at the board and I go, yeah, it's definitely a clock issue. Because if you think that, you're going to get really, really discouraged to solving this because you're going to think that I literally look at a board with uh, thousands of components on it and go, oh, yeah, of course it's a clock issue because my college degree says that. You know, no, it's, it's not that at all. What I, th I looked, I analyzed, and then I saw something that looked funny. And then I apply my brains in that area. And then, my, my, then I look at this, and then in that area I see clock circuit. Then I look at my problem again, and I think about my problem. Again, thinking is the key here. Always be thinking. I think, and I see, hmm. So I'm having a problem with, my problem is related to time. The machine turns on. I don't know, you know, I don't, I, it's turning on. I don't have shorts to ground, but for some reason, the PCH and the CPU, which are controlling all of this shit, the PCH and the CPU are not keeping it on. Why is it not keeping it on? And the PCH and the CPU are controlled by a clock, and the clock is, is going at this really high frequency. So if that clock is not there, what I'm thinking is that thing's, it's initiated to turn on, and then it continues staying on if the clock is good, and my clock signal is, is not there, meaning that my machine is, again, my time-related issue is going to be related to the one thing on this board that, uh, that, that is controlling time. And that thing that's controlling time my problem is related to time. Again, my problem is not that the fan doesn't spin, it's that it just spins for a really short period of time, is right next to the area that got corroded. So am I going to chase down my Thunderbolt boost circuit for external monitor, or am I going to look around the little area before I come up with my, yes, definitely going to be chasing that. No, because like, well, why would I waste time on Thunderbolt? This shit doesn't even turn on. Why would I care about Thunderbolt or DisplayPort or any type of external imagery? It makes no sense. I'm going to do I'm going to look in that area and see. And again, this is what I want to get across to you, because this is about, it's not about uh, giving away solutions. It's about giving away a mindset for troubleshooting that empowers you. Because if you see that I solved this issue by just, just exploring and then looking for what something means and then applying that knowledge once I have it, 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 then it really seems like something that you can do instead of this seeming like this insurmountable challenge that's impossible. That because if you think the requirement is that you know everything, it's going to be really discouraging and you're not going to think you could learn any of this and you're not going to think that you could move on.
you know, the, the reason that a lot of people are really, really good at figuring out problems and they're good consultants, but they make horrible over the phone tech support is that when you're in person, when you're sitting in front of a problem, you can kind of poke around and try to figure it out. The reason in per, you know, over the phone tech support sucks so much is because you, you lose that ability to poke around. You lose that ability to see, oh, the fan is dead in the computer. You lose the ability to see that there's a, a light bulb blinking on the same outlet as the computer. You lose the ability to look at your surroundings and your environment and really come to an informed decision. Decision. You need all of your senses. It's, you need your brain, your eyes. You just need to be thinking really hard all the time to solve this type of stuff. Because again, I'm not a genius. I'm just looking and I'm thinking. And as long as I'm looking and have my eyes open, as long as I'm looking and thinking, I'm going to solve it.